Chapter 8, The Trademark Registration Process, A Long and Winding Road. The trademark application process at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, USPTO, is generally long, complex, and full of deadlines. It is also full of bumps, potholes, detours, wrong exits, and toll booths. You can see some of those in the great visual that accompanies this chapter. Errors in the application process have the potential to jeopardize a brand owner's trademark rights, result in a voided application, delay the application process, or even result in the loss of non-refundable USPTO filing fees. But the goal, a registered trademark, is worth this trip on the long and winding road, as it strengthens a brand, creates tangible intellectual property assets, and generally makes it easier, quicker, and cheaper to resolve any issues with trademark infringers. Now, on the graphic, you can see some of this winding and some of the hurdles and obstacles along the way. To help you navigate this path toward a registered trademark, keep the following key points in mind. Words are generally more important to protect than designs. One of the first decisions faced by many brand owners is whether to apply to register the brand name or logo. A registration for a design technically only covers that design, whereas a registration for words, also known as a standard character trademark, covers all variations of that wording. In other words, a brand owner who registers a logo can only use the circle R next to the logo. But when a brand owner registers the words by themselves, the circle R can be used whenever those words are used in text, in logos, and more. Generally, registering words alone will also provide better protection regarding domain names and social media usernames. But note that creative and distinctive logos should also be protected, but generally in a separate application. Therefore, brand owners ideally should file two or three USPTO trademark applications for each name logo combination, a standard character application for the wording alone, the logo design in black and white, so it covers all color variations, the logo design in color perhaps separately. Now, also important to remember during this long and winding road that patience is a virtue. On average, it takes the USPTO approximately four months. Actually, today, it may even take six months to open a new application and review it for the first time. In general, the entire registration process, from filing through use of the trademark in commerce, takes about one year. It can take many years if there are hiccups in the process, believe it or not, like a dispute or a suspension of an application pending the outcome of some earlier filed application. Another hurdle to clear is searching first. Without first doing a comprehensive search, a brand owner will not know whether someone may already be using a similar name for a similar product or service, or whether there is a pending application or registration that could block their application. A comprehensive clearance search should also be done to determine if someone else is already using a similar mark in a related or competing industry, even if they don't have a registration. You can see elsewhere in the book and my videos where I talk much more about the different searches. Also, think it through. Each application must include a drawing of the word or design to be protected. The wording of the proposed trademark an image of a proposed logo cannot be significantly altered or easily amended after the application is filed. There are a lot of procedural restrictions regarding such amendments. So make sure to put a lot of thought into the specific wording and design before submitting. Otherwise, errors or changes in your preference in the wording or in the image can derail an application. List the owner correctly. Who owns the trademark application? A corporation, a limited liability company, an individual, a partnership or a joint venture? There are many possibilities. 
The ownership must be identified correctly or the application could be void. Another potential pitfall to know about in this long and winding road is knowing whether the trademark is currently used in commerce. USPTO trademark applications can be based on A, current use in commerce, or B, a bona fide intent to use the trademark for the goods or services identified in the future. And stating that there is use in commerce when there is not could affect your rights. While stating that the applicant intends to use the trademark when they're already using it in commerce could make the process take longer and cost additional government filing fees. Know your business. The scope of the goods or services in the application cannot be expanded after the initial filing is made. In addition, if there's a potential conflict, defining the goods or services with the potential conflict in mind could be very, very significant. So know how you want to represent your company and its offerings in the trademark filing or filings. Understand about the difference between collective membership marks and certification marks. These come up relatively rarely, but collective membership and certification marks are special types of trademarks that require special applications with additional information and evidence. A collective membership mark is used by members to signal their membership in a group or organization. A certification mark is used by authorized parties to show that the goods or services meet certain qualifications and standards. Also important to know what it means to file a T's form versus a T's plus application form. When using the T's plus form, an applicant saves some money per class in the filing fees, but agrees to certain restrictions in the USPTO filing process. Two significant restrictions are selecting only a description of goods or services that is in the USPTO database and agreeing that all filings for the application will be made electronically or else be subject to an additional fee. In my experience, the restrictions can cause problems or delays during the application process and are generally not worth the saving for many applicants. Signature, please. For an application to be valid, it must be properly signed. To be properly signed, it seems really simple, but the signatory must have the authority or title that meets the USPTO guidelines. Whitelist to the USPTO. If you do a lot of computer work, you may know what this means. Um, what I'm talking about is that the USPTO will generally send all correspondence regarding the application, including filing receipts, office actions, and more, to the email address provided in the application. It is critical to make sure that USPTO emails are not blocked by spam filters and that you will receive them. Pay attention to deadlines. Missing a deadline during the application process can be costly in many ways. It can lead to costing more money in USPTO fees, but perhaps more importantly, it can lead to delays and can jeopardize the entire application. Know how to check your status. To make sure the process is completed as quickly as possible, checking the status of your application every month or so at a minimum via the USPTO website to ensure you haven't missed any correspondence is very helpful. As part of my firm services, I've created a free cloud-based USPTO status tracking tool that anyone can use called SoftTMware. That's S-O-F-T-M-W-A-R-E. And you can find out more about that at softtmware.com. Now, those are some of the many hurdles in this long and winding road that is the trademark application process. Believe it or not, I once had an application that took more than 10 years. More than 10 years, that's right, I had to say it twice because it's so remarkable. But the client finally got a registration in the end because these hurdles and suspensions can have ripple effects and it is very important to know how to address these hurdles and deal with them upfront to maximize your odds and hopefully reduce the time that your application will take. 
I want to provide a little bit more detail here about all the little steps at the USPTO that go into that application process. I talked in the chapter about the strategies that an applicant needs to be aware of and the requirements. This is more of the sort of TikTok or timeline of the application from start to finish. Every new brand name has unique circumstances and timing issues, and there are a plethora of factors that can disrupt a timeline. But generally speaking, the ideal process and timeline for protecting and launching a new brand name is one, search potential names for clearance and settle on one available name. Two, as soon as possible after step one, apply to register the name at the USPTO based on an intent to use the name. Three, the application will get reviewed by the USPTO approximately four to six months after it's filed. Four, applicant receives preliminary approval at the USPTO, hopefully four to six months after that filing. However, if they don't receive approval, it's likely that an office action will be issued. And then as we talk more about it elsewhere in the book, there's a whole process for responding to a USPTO office action and a timeline for that. Five, the trademark application is published in the public record known as the official gazette by the USPTO approximately two months after the approval in step four. Six, during the 30 day window of publication period, hopefully no one files an objection which is known as a notice of opposition or an extension of time to oppose. Seven, approximately one month following the end of the publication period, the USPTO issues what's called a notice of allowance. Eight, the owner begins using the trademark in commerce now that it's much safer at any time after this publication period. Nine, the applicant submits evidence of using the trademark in commerce to the USPTO to complete the registration process. 10, receipt of a registration certificate approximately two months after submitting that evidence of use in step nine. So this is the entire registration process for an intent to use application and it takes approximately one year or longer. And that is really the best case scenario. If there are any delays, such as a substantive refusal from the USPTO or the filing of an extension of time to oppose or more than a few weeks lapse between the notice of allowance being issued and the filing of the statement of use, the process will take even longer. If the application is completely smooth sailing and all the filings are made within a few days of their eligibility, it is possible to receive the registration in about 10 months under ideal circumstances.